the uh, the least ordered color on the Ichiban. Hey everyone, I'm Gordon. Welcome to the first of the yet to be named channel that we're starting. This virus thing has got us all staying at home. Events and drives are being canceled left, right, and center. And we're just not getting much car time. And so a bunch of us got together and we're yakking, virtually of course, um, and decided to try an online car meet. Uh, this is our first try. We'll see how it goes. We have things planned for a few more episodes at least. So we do this on the first and third Thursday of the month. We dial in at about 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, just sort of hang out together. It's kind of fun. Um, we have a few guests who come on and uh, show their cars. They talk about their rides, uh, caves garages, uh, and, and in some cases, their businesses. We have a couple of vendors lined up who are going to talk to us about their services and products that they uh, provide. Uh, shout out to my colleagues, Brett and Craig, a couple of great guys, real car enthusiasts. Uh, you'll certainly be meeting them in future episodes. We'll have them on and, and uh, they'll be doing some things, talking about their rides and things. That'll, it'll be fun. For, uh, for each, each of the meets, uh, we'll pick out a one of the visitors, one of the people who attended, and we'll have a door prize. I'm not real sure yet how we're going to get it to you, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get together and, and meet you at an event sometime this summer yet. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So without further ado, here's what happened during our first event a couple of weeks ago. Hope you enjoy. Leave us your comments. Thanks. So first up tonight, uh, James Guyler, VW enthusiast uh, over in Waterloo. He just built a fabulous garage, it's awesome. And he has some very interesting cars and stories. Over to you, James. Hi, my name is uh, James Guiley. Um, I live in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And uh, this is kind of just a little bit of my garage that's under construction right now. Um, I built it uh, starting in the springtime, and uh, yeah, it's going to become my man cave and uh, garage for both of these nice little toys here. Um, so first off, we have the 1982 Volkswagen Rabbit. Um, this car has been with me for, I'd say, about five years. Uh, and in those five years, I've done lots and lots of modifications to it. Um, hey, it, there we go. It's not, uh, it's not stock by any means. The uh, little 13-inch rotas that are polished that are on it. Um, took me a while to find those. They're all actually off of a, a Mini Cooper, uh, original Mini Cooper. So got those. Um, the interior, as you can see here, is not stock either. It's a Corrado G60 uh, interior that has been um, covered in a white and black suede. Um, it's a little dirty right now. Don't mind that. I haven't had time to steam clean it yet. It's got a uh, Arnardi steering wheel there. Um, Kind of hard to see in there right now with the limited light I have in the garage. Um, the engine is a two liter ABA that has been swapped out of a 1998 um, Volkswagen Jetta Wolfsburg. Um, it has been ported and polished head on it and it's got a 40 thou plane on the head itself. I don't know how much horsepower it's running. Probably, I don't know, close to 200 or so. Maybe a little shy of 200. Um, the hood is meant to be up like that because the engine does not fit under the hood with the setup that I'm running right now. 
It's got original uh, OEM German crosshair headlights in it as well that I had shipped over from Germany. The uh, other car in my garage is a 1960 Volkswagen Bug. Um, this vehicle I've had for about 10 years. I'm the second owner of this car. Um, it is a rag roof car. Uh, when I bought this car, it was in a barn um, north of Oshawa. And the gentleman who bought it, he bought it in 1960 for his wife, um, who unfortunately passed away in 1962. So the car sat in a barn from 1962 until I bought it about 10 years ago. Um, the wheels have been widened in the back. Um, they've been banded two inches, so they're about eight inch wide on the back. The fronts are still the 5.5 inch wide stock wheels. Um, the engine has been fully gone through, rebuilt to a 1776 uh, engine, uh, single carb, single card on uh, 42 carburetor. Uh, I don't know how much horsepower this car is running, but anything more than the 40 horse it came with stock is good by me. The, uh, there was lots of rust on the deck lid and the valance there, so I had to get parts from Germany and replace those. So I haven't quite figured out how to, uh, how to do the patina on them to match the car, but I'll get to that eventually. Uh, as you can see, it also has drop spindles in it. So this little sticker here is a little bit of a homage to the drop spindles on it. Yeah, and the uh, rest of the garage here, um, just kind of my little setup for now. I haven't really had too much time to organize and, and get everything set because, like I said, it's still under construction. Um, this is the bottom floor here. The garage is 36 feet by 26 feet. Uh, and then if we go up the stairs here, then we'll see the area that eventually will house my car collection of die cast model cars and such will be up here. This area up here is a little less than 800 square feet up here of space have plans for a uh, solid black walnut bar going on this side here um, there will be windows in that area there you see where there's no uh, studs there'll be a couple windows there and over there but for right now it's just kind of storage for my summer tires that i have yet to put on my car um, insulation and such but yeah, you get the idea. It's a pretty large area for my car collection, so that's going to be pretty good. And my bar, of course. You can never go wrong with having a bar in your garage. <sighs> yeah, I, I, I won't disagree with you on that one. So. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to know more about the vehicles? Then uh, you feel free to ask away. I'll do my best to answer them. Now, it seems to me, and now this is when Brett and I were over uh, this, this winter, um, it seems to me that you were telling me something about the Beetle that he put the wrong, he put the wrong flywheel in it or something? Yeah, so when I picked up the car, uh, it had the 1600 engine in it uh, that's in it now that I rebuilt to a 1776. But originally, this car would have come with a 1,200cc 40-horse motor, or 36-horse, sorry. Um, so in 1984, the, uh, the gentleman's son got this car out of the barn, and he was going to use it, going to use it to go to school and whatever as his daily driver. So he decided the, the engine that was in it was seized and he didn't know how to get it unseized. So he got a 1600 uh, dual port engine and he tried to cram it into the existing transmission bell housing that is the in the car now. That's the 40 horse bell housing or 36 horse, sorry, bell housing. 
Mm -hmm. Well, people know in the air cooled world that doesn't really work because the flywheel is bigger on a on a 1600 than it is on a 1200. So he went and rammed this thing into the car, got it bolted up, and he went to go move the car. He started it and it made a racket of a hell of a noise and then stopped turning. And uh, he put it back in the barn and left it there. So he didn't even get it pretty much out of the barn and driving it before he gave up on it and put it back in the barn where I got it. Now, the flywheel that was on the 1600, what it happens is the teeth grind into the bell housing of the, uh, of the, the smaller transmission and they don't allow the motor to move because it locks everything up. Right. Um, right. So when he started it or tried to start it, it just locked up and it wouldn't go anywhere. So what I did, I had to do was when I got the motor, it was seized up as well as it was locked into the transmission because of that bell housing. So I had to rip right. it all apart and I had to make sure that I ground down the flywheel enough or sorry, the bell housing enough to get the 1600 flywheel to fit in freely and not be rubbing anywhere. Is there, is there, is there just one place on the bell housing that is, it's a bit narrower or did you have to grind like the whole? Oh, you pretty much grind the whole thing. You do. Okay. Um, so a lot of people, what they say is, um, since it's a magnesium bell housing, uh, you don't want to take literally a grinder to it because right. sparks and magnesium, not good. Right. So a lot of people say that you can use the flywheel itself to round out the bell housing. Really? So you put the flywheel on. Yeah. You, you don't bolt it together tight. You bolt it together with shims in between. And then you turn it by hand, uh, the crank by hand, and you scrape out. You use the teeth of the flywheel to scrape out all the, uh, the, the magnesium in there. And then you take more shims out and you tighten it up and you do it again and so on and so forth until it turns freely now that's not the way i did it because I, I was, I was really, gonna say, i was I, gonna I say i that that sounds like a bit of a redneck way of doing it yeah so me being a 12-year mechanic probably uh i had a few things a few tools in my in my tool belt to to do that i just used a a flap wheel uh to do it on a die grinder so a similar tool to this here oh yeah just a flap wheel on a die grinder going against the uh the magnesium just to sand it off yeah. without using without making any sparks i'm i'm guessing so, you didn't have to how, how what what sort of dimension of of metal would you have removed an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an uh inch? roughly about an eighth of an inch yeah okay so it wasn't all it the wasn't way around a lot no no not a lot it didn't it didn't take a very very long time to do it and did you say that the rear wheels have been widened? I think you said yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. the rear wheels are now uh, eight inches wide instead of the factory 5.5 inch wide wheels. Mm. Like the front ones here. Or just little skinny things. Little tiny little skinny things. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, yeah, I had a, a gentleman in uh actually near where i bought the car um north of oshawa he did those rear wheels for me in his machine shop okay and shipped them shipped them back down to me and you you've got the running board somewhere or is oh, that yeah. just an easy thing to add okay yeah so what i have to do now with the car i'm waiting until the garage is done so that i'll have space to do this but i have to take the body off of the chassis and I have to fix the heater channels on the bottom. Oh, on yes. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to put the running boards on yet because they actually attach to the body where yep. the heater channel actually yeah, I'm, is. I'm familiar with that horrible job. Yeah, so I, I need to do that on this car on both sides. Uh, so I figured I'm going to leave the trim off and leave the running boards off you might until well. I get all of that done. Yeah. Once I get all of that done, then I can, uh, then I can do the patina. I can put the body back on and then put the running boards on and I can clear it and then I can put the trim on and it'll be away we go. So like I, I said, it's been a 10 year project. 
10 year project to get this thing to the point it's at now, mm. just kind of working in between other things. So now that I have a place to do it, it's going to go a lot faster. Oh, you think, <laughs> um, I uh, just a shout out and you'll know who we're, who I'm talking about. I know somebody who has a Puma body that you can put on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No actually yeah. that's on a, that's on a Puma chassis. Uh, on that car, it doesn't actually use a Beetle chassis oh, okay. on, the, uh, on the 1980 Puma that you're yeah. referring to. Yeah. Uh, any questions for James? Um, speak up. Tell him you like what you see. Tell him he's uh, nuts. Whatever. <laughs> Is there anything original left on the rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the original roof that's on it actually. Wow. And the original and the original paint it has also never been painted. So th that roof is original? Yep, that roof is original, my friend. Oh, because my uh like I said in the 84 um that would crack right at <clears throat> right above that first bend. Yep, right there. Uh, yeah, it would <laughs> crack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um uh, and then uh, underneath, yeah, also, uh, it started getting frayed. The other ones were obviously 90s, and they were, uh, I didn't have them as long as the 84, but I'm surprised that's the original roof on that thing. Uh, it's got a few issues. If you can see that spot right there, there's yeah. starting to be a little bit of a rip up there. Um, there, there is a few spots on the inside where it's uh, a little tattered, mm -hmm. but for the most part, the roof is in really good shape, and I'm surprised as well that it's an original roof i'm amazed that's that's amazing yeah. the uh yeah. i had I, I was commenting before i had one of those as well um <coughs> mine was red um the interior was all black and it had a white roof yep yeah i've seen those before i always wanted a black roof however <laughs> there you go all right. Well, James, thank you so much for showing us around the shop and, and your toys. Uh, this time we're heading to the Northeast USA and George Acorn. He is the editor of the Audi Club magazine. Does a great job. Thank you for your efforts, George. He's going to do a walk around his new Q e-tron that he's had for a few, few months now and uh, tell us about it and his experiences with it and also what his modifications are that he's already done to it. So we'll have a look and see. This is a, this is a project car we've been doing in the magazine. Uh, we bought it, it's my family's car, it's my wife's car actually. Uh, we got it last year, my wife got a, a new job, a long commute and we had a Q7 for her and the kids. And um, uh, we're planning on, on getting a new car for a while. Uh, we were able to afford that Q7 because we had a diesel gate drag that got bought back rather generously and, and we're able to make the jump. Um, so this was a little bit of a stretch, but it was, it's was it been amazing to own because she can charge for free at work. Uh, we also have a charger here that I can I can go through, but I'll go through the car first. Um, so the color is called Cyan Beige or Cyan Beige, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, that it is beige makes it the, the, uh, the least ordered color on the Eachron, but uh, I think calling it beige does it a bit of a disjustice. It's um, uh, it's kind of a grayish tan, but it's it's kind of, if you're familiar with portrait colors, it's somewhere between like fashion gray and, and maybe a little more tan than that. But uh, I'm rather fond of it and it's, it's different. It's not in your face different, but it gets a lot of attention nonetheless. Um, the car, as you see it right now, is in the lowest setting you can do, which is efficiency mode, uh, just a little bit lower than, than sport mode uh, to, to get aerodynamic efficiency. The wheels uh, are not stock. They are 20, well, they're factory 22s from the Q7 and SQ7. These have been there on our old car. Um, these are the, are the stock wheels running those in the winter. They're lighter and forged and more narrow, uh, like uh, contact pack, so we get better efficiency with that. This setup knocks about uh, maybe a little over 10 miles off of range when we do it, but it looks cool. So, so if we go on a long trip, we'll see. Um, but just put the roof rack on uh, recently. We haven't had a need to use it, but I put it on for tonight just to kind of show this Audi accessories rack and um, and box. We had the box for a couple cars now. I had it on my all road, and uh, this is 
it's got a really easy this new version it's got a really easy kind of odd um socket that holds that on there and it just you, you line it up with two holes on the back side and and it clamps onto this lip and goes on and on and nicely um I'm trying to think of any other exterior mods the, the lowered suspension we are about 30 millimeters lower than stock uh that was all done with otis so um uh, New German performance in Washington has is, is, uh, learned how to do that internally without any necessary hardware. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry to call this to me. But uh, uh, anyway, the, the uh, like I said, we were able to lower it about 30 millimeters. Um, so this is 30 millimeters lower than, than the efficiency mode. If I put it in all road mode, that's about where comfort was before. So um, my wife can kind of drive it at that level. And when you drop it really too much below that, sporter efficiency nowadays is pretty bouncy. Um, you're operating the shock like out of their useful range. So um, the ride is a little compromised. Of course, it looks really cool. So uh, it depends what your priorities are. Um, other than that, modification wise, I think that's everything we've done so far. Interior is uh, brown. Some from Addy accessories, mats, some puddle lights. Um, the back seat. I think my kids don't have it too messy. Matt Black Addy Club stickers. But um, it like it, it gets about uh, your specs on each one if you care is about four hundred and let's say four hundred and twenty. Or no, 402 horsepower if you're in boost mode, um, and about 414 pound feet of torque. Uh, it's all pretty immediate. So it's it's a heavy, heavy girl though. It's 400 pounds heavier than like a V8 SQ7 in Europe. Uh, I know that because we verified that these wheels would take the weight of the car without bending. Um, I was fortunate enough to know somebody at Audi, uh, who garbage is a product manager down here, who was willing to check that for me. Um, but uh, anyway, the the in Europe you can charge on either side. I don't know about you, you guys, uh, your Canadian spec cars. Uh, if this is also a charging port in the U.S., this is just a blank port. Mm. Uh, they only do one side for charging. So for us, that's here. The Canadian cars have an optional second side charger. Oh, okay. you guys also get really good cars on the Q7s too. Um, so we, we got a, uh, a juice box charger that uh, works on a uh, 240, unfortunately I had a 220 from the previous owner of this house, but uh, unfortunately my, my electric box is here and we were able to put a, a 240 uh, plug right here and then uh, mounted this on the wall. And I get about 9.6 kilowatts in this house. Um, so we can charge in a couple hours. Just do that, and then it'll it'll go green and or white, I guess. And uh, you can't see it, but it's telling me the the juice net app is telling me you know, what I'm charging at and, and how long it'll take. This usually, even if we came in empty, would charge overnight. Um, you rarely come in empty though. That the um, that's really only when you're on a long trip or if you're coming in empty for just daily commuting, you probably shouldn't have bought the car because that's more range than you need. Um, or more range than this car has, but this car stock is about 200 miles. Um, this, I'm at about 185 now, uh, at this time of year, with these wheels back on, um, which is good, but you know, I think the Tesla does like 300, so uh, there's a ways to go as far as um, range getting up yet. This is Audi's first kind of foray into full electric, so uh, we're actually loving the car. It's super quiet to drive, makes a really cool noise when you're uh, when you're under 25 miles per hour, I don't know if you can hear it. If I uh, if I get in and turn it on and put it in gear, you might be able to hear it. Of course, putting it in gear is is uh is not really accurate because it's a single gear. I think it maxes out at a little over 100 miles an hour. Not that I need it here, but you know, in Germany, I guess that makes makes uh, a difference. So. This is cool. If you guys haven't been in the new systems yet, it's new A6, um, A7, A8, 
eight, Q seven of when Facebook did have this system and what happens here. So hopefully you can hear it. We're losing you, George. Yeah, you're you're kind of cutting out, man. I think you he probably switched over to the Bluetooth in the car. The phone will <laughs> yeah, automatically yeah. connect. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's on. it. We're there. We're there. Okay, we're back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. It, it not only went to Bluetooth, but of course the Audi Connect app to go on. So I'm not going to show you that. But um, it was just a 3D parking feature. It's kind of cool. You got like a 3D camera that you can go all the angles around the car. Um, so anyway, I think. That is about it on this car, unless you guys have uh, have some questions on it. I'd be happy to show you. I got an S5 here too, and then um, I, we had this car for bureaucracy, so if y'all were there, maybe you saw it. And then I have a 4,000 outside if you care. Can you show us under the hood of the uh, of the? Sure. Car? Definitely. Like I said, this has been a really economic car to own. One, because you don't really, I've just taken it in, we've got 10,000 miles on it, and you go in for like a software update, but they really don't do anything. Uh, you've got regenerative braking because like 80% of your braking is done um, with the re regen, so you're not really even using the pads. This mm. is not much of a front, but. Okay. It does have some space up here. And then it comes with this, and you could use this in your house too. I tried to buy another, or I reached out to buy another one instead of buying the juice box that we have, but they're really expensive. So it's much more affordable to just buy one of the charging boxes. This actually either has a, um, a 240 or a wall outlet. This would take several days uh, on a wall outlet. So um, you could do up to a level, what's called a level two. Uh, in a lot of cases where I've charged publicly on level twos, it's like five or six kilowatts. And, uh, but this, what's in my house is a level two as well. And that's getting like 9.6, I think. So um, if a level two is not a level two, is not a level two. They're all, they can all charge to a certain speed, but it really depends how they're wired up and, and what, what their source is. Bill, uh, you've been, I'm guessing you've been out in the e-tron with George. Oh yeah, we took a road trip on it. What uh, What are your thoughts as as a passenger, not as an owner, but just as a you know as a passenger? What are your thoughts on it? Well, I had. Um, I mean, obviously, it's an Audi, so you sit inside, and interior is high quality. Um, we, I was able to. For, I was fortunately able to have uh, Bar and Etron for a couple of days uh, last summer, uh, and. Uh, you know, obviously my first experience with an electric vehicle, and let me tell you, range anxiety is real. <laughs> but, you know, that was my first day of driving, and by the time you get to the second day, you kind of learn a couple of little tricks. Um, and it's, you know, you spend the first five minutes just ooing and aahing, and then afterwards it's just an Audi. So this past fall, George and I took an 800, was it 800 miles round trip? Yeah, I think it was a little more, right? We went up to Vermont for Vontoberfest. Yep. So, yeah, so, you know, the advertised range on this thing is, what, 200 miles? Uh, yeah, and, and we were running, we weren't running these wheels yet. So we, we had that efficiency. We were running a hitch mount rack with, like, one of these e-bikes on it. Mm. So it didn't help aero any. Um, we weren't running the box. I didn't have the roof rack at the time. No, the, yeah, the e-bike weighs 70 pounds. Uh, obviously, the uh, bike rack, which is a hitch mount, which was pretty heavy. Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, but you know what? There were, there were plenty of stations. We, we stayed the night, the first night, uh, somewhere in New York, uh, and they actually had a, uh, a charger there that we could charge up. Not an Electrify America one, but still a charger. You know, people are like, 200 miles? That's not going to get you anywhere. But when we filled up the car, we... Uh, so, so, it was, so it, it was times that you would normally be stopping anyway. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And it, it kind of made us, um, what George put it perfectly, is like, it kind of just made us like slow down and basically smell the roses. Yeah. So, so we, had, we had a couple different types of stops, right? When we left Pennsylvania, we were, to make the big jumps, we were doing electrified, we were bouncing from like EA, Electrify America stops. 
usually at Walmart's, at least in this region right now. Um, so, so that was interesting because I, I kind of waited till the last minute to leave. We ended up getting to the first charging station probably around 7.30, 8 o'clock. It was dark. Um, but, um, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a learning experience. It's kind of fun being a bit of a pioneer with this and kind of learning the road trips. My, my family and I plan on, we do a summer vacation up to Bar Harbor and Acadia, Maine um in august and we were planning like this was the setup i was going to take the e-bike on the back and everything and i was going to leave the 22s on and see how it goes i planned out the course the longest run we had to make uh without a charger was about 135 miles with my, my plan so we should have been fine but with the pandemic we'll see if it happens yeah all right any uh we're going to keep moving on thank you very much george really appreciate Thanks, that it george. sounds like uh a new toy that you're quite happy to have for sure Thanks for letting me um, talk about it. Thanks for the walk around of the e-tron, George. Appreciate your time. Next up is Trevor. Trevor is the president of the Eastern Canada chapter of the Audi Club of North America and is TTRS. Check out the license plate. Hi, this is Trevor. As you can probably tell from my license plate, this is a 2012 TTRS in Suzuka gray, not white. I bought it uh, CPO'd uh, back in January of 2012. I guess the previous owner didn't like the fact that it was too fast. <laughs> too fast. Uh, I'm a member of the Audi club. Get an ad in. I um, done a few modifications at this point. See how well I can come in on the brakes here. You can't see much of it. Um, I've replaced the uh, OEMs with a gyro disc front and back. Um, done some suspension modifications with regards to uh, having to replace the mag ride, and I had uh, replaced them with a Kony. Uh, B6s. Wasn't able to find the uh, shocks anywhere in North America. Uh, a friend by the name of Bruce was able to uh, supply me a set from uh, Germany and at the same time he got a set for his Corrado. It's a daily driver. I currently have 180,000 kilometers on it. Uh, here's a little touch for the sake of the TT. Uh, currently, I've got my winter tires on. And I still don't trust the weather. So uh, my summer tires are right here, and they'll be going on shortly. These are OEM. They came with the car. Um, as clean as it looks, because I just washed this morning. I'm still having some issues with iron on the paint. People with darker cars don't notice it. If you've got a white vehicle, it's very noticeable. So it's all those little brown spots. All the brown dots were from, uh, I'll say, brake dust. So in this case, I will spray in, in this particular case, I'm using a G Techniques uh, iron in general fallout remover. We'll give it a bit of time. What you can see right now is they're starting to react to the fallout cleaner uh, and uh, turning purple. I've done it on the wheels as well. I was going to say, can you use that on the wheels? Just put it on a couple spots here. I don't worry about the whole wheel. And then you can tell from the wheel, mm. it's now purple. Oops. And if I come back to this one, you can see how they're streaking now. It's just a matter of leaving it on there for a bit.
throw some water on it. In my case, I've been using uh, G Technique for a while on the car. Whoops, I guess I can put a plug in for G Technique. And uh, another addition to the car being a warning device. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Sweat on the wheel Voice in my head that drives my cheer Stop, baby, cause I need 